Okay, so hello and welcome to Digital Ocean School. My name is Ellie and I'm part of the education team here at Surfers Against Sewage. And for the next 15 weeks, we are going to be bringing you some of the best bits for, from our environmental education programmes, Plastic Free Schools and Ocean Schools, direct to your sofa, living room or classroom. So wherever you are in the world. Um, why have we gone digital? So while we can't be continuing our normal work with you guys in schools, what we can do is create a platform for us to share knowledge with you and continue to inspire the next generation of ocean activists. So every Tuesday, I'm going to be introducing the new topic, um, and that's what we're doing today. And then on Fridays, we will be testing your knowledge with a quiz or sharing the work that you guys have done during the week. Um, you can head to the Surfers Against Sewage website after this live broadcast to download the resources that run alongside these lessons. And you can find the SAS website at www.sas.org.uk. Head to the education pages and click on Digital Ocean School. So it will look like this. And all you have to do is scroll all the way down here and you can download your resources there. And we've split them into Key Stage 1, 2 and 3 resources. So there's lots to be getting on with. OK, so there's a lot that we can learn from nature. And today we're going to start by learning about the rocky shoreline of the UK. This live lesson's going to last about 20 minutes. Um, if you have any questions, please do plop them up on the side and I will try and re like respond to them as they're coming in. And I will also respond to some at the end of the 20 minutes as well. Um, and I'm heading over to Instagram Live straight after this. Um, so if you miss any of it or you'd like to watch it again, then you can do that as well. OK, so we're going to be exploring the rocky shoreline, which is a fantastic habitat and learn some interesting facts about the plants and animals that call this extreme place home. Um, and I've spoken about I've said the word rocky shore a lot. Some of you guys might not be fully aware what a rocky shoreline is. So I've done a little sketch that hopefully will help explain a little bit about the rocky shoreline. So we're an island nation, we live in the UK and we're surrounded by rocky shorelines that all look quite different. But here is an example of one where you have steep cliffs dropping down into the ocean. So the rocky shore is essentially where the land meets the sea. And it's an extreme place to live because it changes dramatically during the day because of the rise and the fall of the tides. So if I was to live here, I would struggle quite a lot because I'd be spending half my time underwater, not able to breathe, and the rest of the time probably shivering on the edge of this rock or getting sunburned. But the plants and animals that live here are perfectly adapted to live in this extreme, extreme habitat. Now, I mentioned the word habitat a few times there. A habitat is a home. So for you guys, your bedroom is your habitat. Same with me as well. Um, and this is also a habitat for hundreds of different creatures. Um, and I also mentioned the word tides. Now, the tides are the rise and fall of the ocean. And this happens twice a day. We get two high tides and two low tides every single day. And the tides are controlled by the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon, as well as the rotation of the earth. For those of you guys that are in key stage three, um, I have set you a little challenge to research a little deeper, excuse the pun, into the tides and find out about the different zones that you will find on the cliffs because of the tides. OK, so... Where we're going to focus on today is actually the lower shore, so down here. And I am going to run through some of the interesting plants and animals that call this place home. And we're going to start with a plant that is often overlooked. And it is a very simple but also amazing plant called seaweed. So I have got 
a strange drawing of a sea lettuce, which is a type of seaweed. There are hundreds of different types of seaweeds that you can find all over the UK and all over the world. But today we're going to just look at this sea lettuce and it gets its name because it is very similar actually to lettuce that we eat at home, less crunchy, a lot more slimy. But seaweed in general is a very, very important part of the rocky shore habitat. And that is because it is a primary producer. So this means that it makes its own food from the sun in a process called photosynthesis. Now, before this happened, before photosynthesis, there was no oxygen on Earth at all. So plants that are able to do this, primary producers, are key to life on Earth. Now, seaweed is also a major source of food and shelter for a lot of the creatures that we are going to be looking at today. Because it's, when we zoom down into the rocky shoreline and we look inside the rock pools and on the rocks, this stuff can really protect an animal from the sun or from the wind just by being there and sheltering it a little. Another quite interesting fact that you might like to know about seaweed is you probably use this every single day without realising because it is a main ingredient in a lot of toothpastes, cosmetics and paint as a, a thickener. Um, so it's a very, very useful resource. And if you look at the resources online, again, I'm going to have already challenged you guys to have a little look more in depth into the different types of seaweeds that grow in the UK, because it really is cool when you start to look at them. So unlike a plant, one thing that is quite different is seaweed doesn't actually have roots. It does have something that looks a little bit like a claw that actually helps it attach onto a rock so that when the tide comes in and it is floating around like a forest underwater, it's not going to get pulled away from its rock. So you sometimes see them washed up on the beach and it does look like roots or like a little hand. And that's what that is. It's its way of attaching onto the rock, which is really cool. OK, so... Moving on from seaweed, I'm going to have a look at potentially my favourite animal and something that uses seaweed as a form of shelter, and it's a sea anemone. So again, this is not a real one, just a drawing, um, but this one is a beadlet anemone. Um, and there are hundreds, well, not hundreds, but there are lots of different varieties of sea anemone that you can find in the UK. I've just seen a question come up. You can't eat these ones. It, wouldn't be very nice, but they do have a texture a bit like jelly, so they look a bit like jelly, but I wouldn't eat them, no. Um, now, one thing that's super cool about beadlet anemones, you find them often in rock pools, and as the tide comes in, they stretch their tentacles out like this, so they're floating around in their rock pool with their tentacles out, and their tentacles have lots of little stinging cells in them, and the reason for this is as their prey swims past them, they sting them with their tentacles and that actually paralyzes their prey. And they then pull that prey in and they have a mouth in the middle here and they eat their prey whole like that. When the tide goes out and their home, their habitat dries up, they pull all of their tentacles in. So they're hugging themselves a little bit. And this is their way of making sure that they don't dry out. So they keep themselves nice and wet by hugging themselves with their tentacles. Now, beadlet anemones, another cool fact about them is that they actually have little blue beads in between all of their tentacles. So for us, it would be a little bit like having a tennis ball under our armpits. But what they do with these blue beads is really fascinating because they actually use them to have fights with other sea anemones in a rock ball because they each want to fight for the best spot in a rock ball and they throw them at each other and that's how they, they get the best, the best spot. I just saw another question that says, will it sting us? So that's a really good question because actually their stinging tentacles aren't strong enough to affect us. But if we were to touch them, they are still trying to sting us. So that's a very good question. Well done. OK, so moving on. Next one we're going to talk about is a limpet. 
And these are beautiful little creatures. So they again live in the lower shore of the rocky shore, so down by the sea. And when you are at the beach, sometimes it's almost, there's so many of them that you maybe don't even notice they're there because they're disguised on the rocks quite well in this greyish colour. And they're a pyramid shaped shell. So a little bit like a triangle like this. Now, just like the anemone, they too have had to adapt themselves to live half of their lives out of the water and half of their lives underwater. And they do this in a very special way because these guys, so they live on a rock and they travel around the rock when the tide is in. So when they're underwater, they travel around the rock and they eat something called algae, which is on the surface of the rock. But they do this with a very strange tongue called a radula. So what they're actually doing is they're moving around this rock, licking it and licking all of the algae off. And that's how they eat. So it's quite a slow process and their tongue is a bit like a conveyor belt. So it's not like, not like that. It just goes round and round and round like that. And this is how they move around a rock. Now they can only move around the rock when it's wet or when it's underwater. Um, and one really amazing fact is that they always head back to the exact same spot on a rock. So they have something called a home scar. Um, and this is where they nestle themselves down. They really scratch themselves into the rock. And so when the tide drops out again, they clamp themselves down and they let the water wash back out to sea but they trap a little bit of water inside their shell so that they don't dry out during the low tide. It's a really interesting way of keeping themselves healthy. So these guys live all over the rocky shoreline, high and low. However, the size of their shells and shape of their shells changes due to how high up the rock they live. And this, again, another challenge for some of you guys to do um, during the week is find out what the sort of different size shells are for the different levels. That's a good one to research yourselves. OK, so next creature we are going to look at is called a dog whelk. And dog whelks are the real carnivores of the rock pool or rocky shore world and they actually eat limpets so they're they're a bit of a scary creature that I'm going to talk about next but they eat limpets and mussels in a very very strange way so what they do as they're sliding along the rocky shore a bit like this they try and sit themselves on top of a mussel or a limpet and they're going to eat a mussel today. What they do when they're sat on top is they actually have this tongue that is a little bit like a drill and they drill all the way in to the shell and they inject the animal that's inside the shell with an enzyme that turns the animal into like a soup. So it will turn this mussel into like a mussel soup and it then sucks that animal back out of the shell and that's how they eat it. So um, this process takes up to five days. So it's, it's not a fast dinner at all. It takes five days for a dog whelk to be able to eat a mussel. And once they've finished eating, there's some, they then just hide away in a crevice or in a cave until, until they're ready to eat again because they're so exhausted from the whole process that they have to hide away. Now, these guys are, they look very similar to snails actually, um, but you can distinguish them because they have quite a pointed shell like this. And a really cool fact to know about dog whelks is their shell colouring is actually quite different depending on what they eat. So if you see one with a lot of sort of brown stripes across it, that indicates that that dog whelk eats a lot of mussels. <laughs> Again, I've seen another question come up, can they hurt a human? Good question. So these animals, they're all very, very small. This one, probably about five centimetres, and it wouldn't ever eat us. It just would be impossible, really. Um, and they are perfectly adapted to eat 
the things that you find along the rocky shore. So dog whelks aren't ones that we need to worry about, but it's a good question because we learn about these creatures and we learn about what they do and then you think, oh my goodness, what's it going to do to me? So, but also you don't need to worry about mussels too much because they have a very good way of defending themselves. So mussels, these ones here, now they can defend themselves from, from dog whelks um, and they do this in a very strange way actually. So mussels actually grow beards. Well, it's a beard-like substance that they use to attach themselves onto a rock. So it comes out of the bottom here and it will attach them to the rock and it's a very strong, kind of quite sticky and tangly substance. And you don't usually see a muscle on its own, you'll see it in a big pack of muscles, so there'll be a lot of this substance. And what can happen sometimes as dog whelks are coming along, they can get tangled in that beard and if they're tangled there then they get stuck there and it does mean that they they would starve which is really sad but i guess this is what happens um in in the natural environment now mussels again are a filter feeder they feed by sucking in huge amounts of water and filtering the things that they can then eat out and washing the rest of the water out they're also, because of this, a very good indicator of healthy water. Um, and again, for the Key Stage 3 students, in your resources that you can find online, I'm going to ask you to delve a little bit deeper into why they are a good indicator. Okay, so, wow, this time has gone very quick already, um, and I'm heading over to Instagram in the next couple of minutes but before I go I just want to say thank you guys for logging on you can head to the Surfers Against Sewage website and that was sas.org.uk head to the Digital Ocean School pages where you can find the resources that you can download and work on this week and I will see you again on Friday morning at 11am because we have got a Rocky Shore quiz and I'm going to be testing your knowledge out there. So for Key Stage 1 pupils, we've got a Rocky Shore colouring sheet online. For Key Stage 2 and 3, you guys have got some investigating to do. And if you want to share any of your work with us online, please use the hashtag Ocean School. And that means that we can see the work you've been doing because we would love to share some of the work um, with the rest of you guys that are logging on to these lessons as well. Okay then, so thanks for tuning in for lesson one and I will see you guys on Friday morning.